Hi guys, I'm Gizmo and the video I'm making today is very important. Uh, if you want to use my new mod correctly, you have to watch this video in its entirety because it's a little more complex than a normal everyday automation mod. There's a lot of stuff and transformation and things to know about this mod that you can that you would miss normally if you uh, just try to discover everything by yourself. I, I assume. Uh, so uh, this new mod is the Brass Era vehicle, so 1900s, 1910s, uh, maybe all the way to mid 1920s. I think this uh, mod can be used for all of that time period, and it would still work. Uh, there's three official families here, but all of these are like six in one, and I'll explain that in more detail later. Uh, what you have is a short nose version, so like cheap vehicles, mainly like the Ford Model T. Uh, there's another family up here, which is relatively similar. It's like exactly the same, except you've got a longer front end. And that's because high-end vehicles and luxury cars of that time period mostly had bigger engines, and that's pretty much it. The, the engine, uh, the cabin size uh, didn't really change. Uh, the, the cabin interior would be more luxurious, but there weren't more space in the cars themselves. Uh, what rich people liked the most in that time period uh, in a luxury vehicle was having a more complex machine, so it's the engine that they would show off. Uh, and I have also a separate family here for a race car that's a bit different. So, <clears throat> one thing to note first is that unlike my other mods, which we can see here, uh, my uh, pre-1900 mod. All of these have trouble with BeamNG Drive because they use strange chassis configurations in order to fit and hide the chassis of automation underneath their 3D models. Uh, the, oops, the two main families for my new mod... What's going on? Why is it teleporting like that? So. These two families, they don't have any problem with uh, BeamNG at all. The reason for this is that I didn't need to make the chassis super slim to fit in these car bodies, uh, because if I did, then the arch would poke through the radiator grill because the radiator grill end up being in between the wheels instead of in front. Uh, this was a hassle to make for me as a modder, but as a player, for you, it's a good thing because now, this car has norm, uh, normal chassis dimensions, that means it works perfectly fine in BeamNG with no problems. Uh, this one, uh, the race car, however, is different because uh, since uh, I couldn't use this new trick that I use on this one, because there's no fenders to hide the chassis at all, uh, because of that I had to use my previous trick, which means this one might have problem with BeamNG, but not all the time because I've made a test already and I had no trouble at all with it. Uh, it just worked. So maybe it won't break, but it's a possibility. It might happen. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I've got another video covering how to fix a car that breaks in BeamNG in terms of steering or suspension if that's what you're encountering while using this one. But the other ones are gonna work just fine. So it's finally time to get inside of it, and I'm going to make some tests with the pickup version first. Uh, oh, I didn't change the year. Might be a good thing to put that all the way back to 1946. Okay, so let's go for something very simple just for test purpose. Uh, as I said, no problem with BeamNG, uh, so no need for heavy duty dis suspensions like I, you, I like you, like those that were needed with my other mods. This one works even with weak suspensions like double wishbone, which is great because now we can finally have these cars with low ride height uh, engines. I'm just going to take something, whatever. This doesn't fit the bill, but I'll just take it just so there's an engine in it. Alright, uh, so I wanted to show you the pickup first because it's the most complex in terms of morphs. There you go, okay. 
So first things first, why am I saying that this car family is a six in one car family? Well, the back end of all of these uh, body types would be relatively similar from car to car, even across models or even across brands in that time period. Because back then, what you norm normally buy at a car dealership would be just a rolling chassis with a front end. So the front end would be characteristics uh, of the brand or model that you buy, but the back would be designed by a coach builder which you would commission separately after purchasing the car. So these would be like uh, made by other people and sometimes the same kind of body would be on the same car, uh, on a different car from a different brand, but the front would be different. So by keeping this section relatively similar but changing the front, you can have a completely different uh, type of car inside the same 3D model. And that's what I did here. So this is uh, the kind of shape that you'd see on an early Ford Model T. But if I grab it, let's say it's a bit tricky here, but don't worry, there's a trick. Here, okay, this, I have one. Okay, so this would be the Rolls Royce one, where it's like a roof. If I grab it, I can pull it back. So that's two of them, but there's a lot more. The problem is they're all layered on top of one another, which make them extremely hard to select. <clears throat> and because of that, I've designed something that I call a morph handle. Basically, you take a part of the car, like this section here, that doesn't really change if you move it backward or forward and you make it move alongside one of the morph that's here so you can grab it from under here and that will change the front of the car and that's one of the complex things that I have to show you so if I grab this one and I move it I've got the Rolls Royce one that I just shown I pull this back uh, this one here it's like a pierce arrow which is a round on top and flat on the side if I grab this pull it back grab the third one this is a little more complex that's the shape of the white motor company which technically did steam cars oops you can try to combine some of these to make a more complex shape but it doesn't always work because they're kind of complex and they don't overlap well this is round all around so it's a little more like a bigatti And this one, oh yeah, that's the radiator here that you can put in the back of the engine bay if you want. So one of them is hidden in between here. Yep, here, right there. And this one, I don't know why it always ended, ended up kind of hidden, but it's the most complex one and it's a Renault. So a European car that as a very different shape here and I can tell you this one was extremely hard to do and this one has its own back radiator here that's shaped differently <coughs> I really hope that you guys are gonna enjoy this shape because it was extremely hard to copy from one car to the next now uh, unlike other vehicles uh, the pickup car has a whole bunch of morph on the back with different elements that can be hidden to get different type of shapes and so basically it's just like the front it got a lot of complex morphs in the back <coughs> you can try to grab them directly on top but I've gave them all a bunch of morph handles here so for instance if you grab this one and you pull you can pull the planks together to make them tighter and if you pull all the way you can hide them and now you only have one plank um, there's one right there in between that I'm not catching here this one hides the planks completely uh, this one gives you two instead of one uh, of three You've, you could have one in the other here so that's total uh, this one puts them at an angle which increases the cargo capacity, but it only works with three planks, so uh, you cannot combine them, so you have to find, I think, ended up behind the wheel. Uh, there's more, more fendals that you can grab. Oh yeah, I've got some here, I think. Yeah, these are, yeah, because yeah, you have the same morphs here in the back uh, for the tailgate. 
So there's a lot of stuff to explore. Uh, there's one here if you grab directly onto it. Oh, that's the width. Uh, there, this one you can hide the, this part. If you hide all the planks and all of the sides, you get a full flat bed. That's also possible. You can hide everything. Uh, as you've seen, obviously you can make it wider and kind of really long. I've made it so you can get it kind of ridiculously long if that's what you want. It's kind of dumb though because it would fall back. But it's there if you want. Uh, also, quick note, uh, both of the truck variant have this uh, fancy angled roof. And if you grab from the side around here, this one, you can get the sea body. You know, the cars of that period that had this crazy shape that I find just really cool. Uh, one thing to note also is all of these, uh, at least those with an exposed interior, you can grab the wheel and decide if it's a right-hand drive, left-hand drive, or maybe even center drive if you want. That's there. Uh, oh, another note with the doors. I'm just gonna pop into fixture right now. Uh, that's not a good example. I need something that pokes through. You see this. Of course, it doesn't make sense in a car like this, but uh, I've used separate elements in certain place. For example, the door here is a separate element, and what that means is if you put a fixture in between from the body to the door, it will break the car. That seems like a problem, but really it doesn't make that, it's not really a problem, you just have to avoid putting something that bridges the way across the body and the door. Uh, the reason why I did this is because since it's a separate element, if you want, you can remove the door entirely, like this, which is something that cars of that period did. A lot of cars just didn't have doors uh, and it gives a different style entirely. Uh, I don't, I've got a whole bunch of cars with open interiors like this which you can all remove the door if that's what you want. Uh, this one has no fenders in the back but there's a morph on the fender that's worth noting. This one is easy to find. You curve the tip down if you want them to curve. But there's one that's hidden underneath that you might very easily miss if you're exploring this on your own. And that's this one here, which make this strange shape, which I've been inspired by. Uh, I've seen this for the first time on the Mercer Raceabout. I think it's 1909. Anyway, uh, cars add that kind of shape and you can have that in the back too. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, it, some of them. If you, I think it's light truck monocoque chassis. If you choose that option, you need to lift the board like this because the there's a part of the chassis that becomes slightly visible sometime. Uh, so that's there to hide that too. Uh, that's pretty much everything I had to sh talk about for the pickup variant. Uh, I said this, the thing, okay, the tips of that. Uh, race car. Going to go back. Oh, further back. Uh, here. I'm going to go into the race family. Oh, where is it? It's not sure. Oh, wait. Okay, there it is. Haha. <laughs> Gonna give it a minute to adjust. This mod's a bit laggy, but yeah, you, you just have to give it some time. Uh, this one, what did I want to say already? The back, yes, uh, this one uh, and the Speedster too. Uh, what I did is I didn't check if the chassis would fit with the body before making all of the morph targets for the transformations and because there's between 21 and 30 per car which explains why they are a bit laggy in the car editor uh, I didn't want to redo them all after changing this so what I did instead is build a few morph on top of those that already existed in order to hide the chassis and of course this one because it's an open wheeler I had the very slim chassis option and you need to put a lot of offset to get them into a right position 
So here you can hide the back of this one. I'll show you how to hide the chassis on the Speedster as well. But first I'd like to check the very strange transformation that you can have on the seat here. You can make them a bit smaller. Uh, if you grab them here, you can lower them. But if you grab the one that's on this side, like this, you can also yeah, get it. Come on. There. Okay. If you want, you can get a <coughs> single seat in the center. And of course, if you do that, you need to do this like that. And basically what you get is a single seater race car. So that's a possibility uh, that you can have. So that was for the race car. Okay, next thing on my list, Speedster. Right, to go back to the other family. Should have done that one first, actually. But oh well. There you go. Uh, here. Speedster. Where is my Speedster? There. go. So Speedster is a bit like the race car but as you can see it's got all fenders and a smaller engine bay. Here you hide the chassis by stretching outward like this and you can also stretch like that. So that's how you'd hide the chassis on this one. Uh, that's pretty much all I had to say about this one in particular I guess. I can lift this like this and show you that uh, as you may have noticed, wait, I'm just gonna cross out what I talked about. This, I talked about this, 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 this. Uh, okay, this one. Windshield. As you've my, noticed, this car has no windshield. None of them have, uh, except for the entirely enclosed ones. Uh, that's because they have cars of that era had very uh, different types of windshield from one car to the next and I wanted to give this extra level of customization. So if you want a windshield on your car, which you probably do, you're going to grab them here and they are from the uh, pre-war fixture mega pack, which is also a mod that I've made. And these are all uh, options of uh, windshield that you can use. So we've got this one, which is open, this one, which is closed. It also doesn't have the side windows. This one is angled this way. You can flip it the other way around if that's what you want. Uh, you've got small ones, like this Brooklyn one that's meant to be on the side here. Uh, one of my favorite in this entire pack is actually the monocle one, not this one, this one, because it's attached on the top of the plank. But if you move it in the right position, like, oh, hang on, let me do this again. Oh, I lost it. Oh, I have two now. It's a bit finicky, but if you get it in the right position, and I don't. I'm too far back. like this. So as you can see now, it looks like it's attached on the steering column and that's a thing that cars of that period used to do. They would attach this stock thing and attach the monocle windshield in front like that. And that's one of the type of things that they would do in that time period, which is kind of cool and I've done that. Uh, now that this is talked about... Uh, okay, the roof of the Landolet. The most fancy of all of the cars in this family. <clears throat> the rich one with a clear disdain for plebs. Where you have a rich guy and his car and because he has a driver and he thinks, ah, oh, the driver is just a normal peasant. I don't want him inside the cabin with me. He's going to be exposed to the elements. So you have like this roadster in front and enclosed in the back. Uh, if you want, you can leave your poor driver a roof, so at least it won't rain straight down on him. But if you really hate the poor, you 
can do this and now it's going to pour on the poor. Ha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> Rain joke. Uh, this car is another party trick up its sleeve. A few actually. First you can stretch the car like this. So if you grab this and pull that like that, you might think there's a problem with the car. That shouldn't happen. But actually that's because if you stretch the cabin all the way back, Oh, I still have a problem. I'll fix that before release. But yeah, you can grab the window and pull it back like this. I'll fix this right here before I put it on the workshop. So uh, I've made the morph of the window sufficiently long that they would push the window back when the rest of the cabin is stretched, even though it kind of doesn't work if you pull the cabin like that. Uh, the other party trick that this has, it's a bit hard to grab right here, I got it first try. You can pull like this and you can switch the uh, hard top back section for a soft top one because that's the ultimate uh, stupid thing about cars of this period. I don't want the driver to be to be inside the cabin with me because he's a poor guy, so I'm gonna leave him on the outside, but I still want a roadster though. So I don't want to be outside with him too, so I'll make it an enclosed car that can open but only in the back. <laughs> There's something supremely funny about this, uh, but it's there, you can do that too. Uh, last thing that I would do about Morph would be talking about the uh, Roadster and the Runabout. Just show it on the, uh, I mean Tower and Runabout. I'll just show it on the Tower here. And that's, oh the Morph is completely broken because I've switched things around on the other car. But yeah, normally it spawns like this. And if you want, you can open the roof. I mean, there's Morphs that you can use on the roof itself if you want to have different styling but if you grab I think here you can pull all the way sometimes it takes a few drags because it's a very big morph but you can switch the closed roof for an open roof so you can have it folded down in the back here and that's kind of cool uh, this one kind of needs the back stretch to hide the chassis as well so yeah, that's all of the morph that I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm still going to push this back in. Can I? Come on. I want my roof back. There. Oh, also, quick note. Uh, you can hide the seat here and this becomes a cargo area. It increases the car's cargo capacity. Uh, if you want to know that. Uh, these cars with open... Uh, roof like this sometime add Are you kidding me? I have another fix to do all right There's another bunch of fixtures that I added to the fixtures mega pack that you might not know about and it's these two here so that here is Basically a pin that's designed to grab the windshield and it's designed to be attached in the front It looks like it's supposed to attach to the side, but because the fender is hiding the side of the engine bay, the only way to attach it is from the front. So you attach it from the front and then you can move it like this to adjust it. It's kind of finicky because it's behind the surface but that's the best I could do. <coughs> <coughs> and you can mirror it and pull it like... oh, hang on. It kind of clipped in the middle here. I'm going to remove the, the magnetism. Come on here. There you go. Okay, so you can stretch it, then go and grab the side of the windshield, which is actually not installed on this one. So think that there's a windshield here, and technically you, this is meant to go and attach itself to the side of the windshield. Uh, and this makes those kind of rods that cars of that period had. Uh, there's different one, and the difference is you can grab from the top at three, di three different uh, distance because some of the windshields are angled and there's also two different heights. Oh, there you go. This is supposed to be the top height and this is supposed to be grabbed midway. 
So this is if you want to grab the hinge in the center, and this one is if you want to grab the top of the windshield. On top of this mod, uh, of this uh, part added to the pre-war fixture pack, I also have this right here, which is a belt, but it's a belt that's in the air. It's not like the one in the bumper section that's like a strap for the hood. This one with cardinal lock on, that's in order to grab the roof basically like this because some cars had that too like just a leather strap that would attach to the roof and if you want to grab like this but more to the side there's an angled one yep like this this one would be good for uh, for that that position here it's like you're grabbing the side of the roof with it so and again, there's two. There's uh, six variations: the angled and the straight one. And you can grab it from farther away or straight like this. So say if I went back and decided, no, you know what? I want to push the roof back further. You'd have different position for these leather strap. Uh, actually, there's another note that I should make here before I move to the um, positioning of the lights. When you grab these windshields uh, if you install it as you can see here it I, I've been able to install it just fine but technically the roof is above it so the ray cast for the fixture is coming from above so if I were to change the morph now or pick other fixtures it might happen that the windshield will be teleported on top of the roof uh, don't worry just put the fixture put the, the windshield back in its place on the this um, firewall section here right at the end before you move on to do the rest of the car and it will stay where it should be uh, so that's that too so basically the only thing I still have to talk about right now is positioning of lights great we're almost done so again moving to one another of my own mods the pre-war lights here. Uh, I don't remember if these are in the pre-war mega pack or if they're standalone. Um, when I designed these I was expecting pre-war cars to have like a flat surface in between the fenders here which would stay flat all the way and that would be easy to put fixtures on top of but because the, I had to hide the chassis with these fake sub fenders and fake leaf springs uh, this here has like this kind of weird shape here instead that's harder to work with. But there still is uh, good ways to get the fixtures in the right place. I've seen people test my car already, I've given it to some people. And most people would end up having the, the, the lights way too high like this, that, that doesn't work. Uh, some of the lamps can be attached flat on top of the grill here and that kind of works. But uh, some of them aren't available from the front side. Uh, and I've realized that those installed from the top here, they were supposed to attach something like this. Uh, this is actually not bad, actually. But sometimes you get something finicky. Like here, if you try to slide it, it kind of teleports all the way around. So if that starts to happen, my trick is first scale it way down then put it on a surface and then since it's scaled way down it behaves a lot better and you can get right up to the side and then you can pop cardinal lock and scale it back up to whatever size size you want and I'm going to change it for one that's lower and that's not lower at all uh, this yeah it does okay so now I could scale it back up a bit it's still too high actually uh, cars of this period literally had the the, the the light would be lower than that but just for the sake of examples here uh, scaling it back way down helps with positioning and another take trip uh, blah, blah, another trick rather is to always remove cardinal lock before you start moving it around because if I grab it now and I move it started where it was and it followed my mouse but if I take it while Cardinal Lock is on, it kind of teleports a bit and then I get an imprecise movement. And that might not sound too bad from the first, from right now, but say I was trying to install 
a coach lamp. Uh, let me get a coach lamp here like this. Say I've got a coach lamp on the side here for some reason. And I'm then moving to the Chrome Beast family here and I grab say this and I put it here and I'm like okay now I want it to be straight because it's crooked so I put it straight and I'm like yeah it's not exactly where I want it to be so I'm going to move it like this then I move it like oh and actually I got it this time but that doesn't always work sometimes teleports when you leave Cardinal Lock on before moving it and then it, you get improper movement so you end up going too far and then too far back and then too far forward so always removing cardinal lock moving a bit testing oh it's not good okay moving back again clicking and that's that gives you much more precise movement so that's the other trick and that's pretty much it thank you for watching and have fun with this new mod i've worked almost two months on this i think and i really hope that all of you are going to find a lot of uh, are gonna have a lot of fun with it maybe one last thing uh, that i almost forgot before we go uh let's grab say in this family i've realized that some of the lights let me flip it around uh, coach lamps, which are designed to be attached to the side, can be attached to the side of the invisible surface, which is right here on the side, of the inside of the fenders. So you can get the side-mounted lamps to look like they are front-mounted. That's another trick that I found while using this mod. So uh, you can keep this in mind as well. So yeah, thanks you for thank you for watching and have fun with my new mod.